introduction page. Yeah, today I have about 15 minutes to cover relatively big questions, so I'll try to fly through some slides and just give you our perspective of how, I guess, the small startups can be big. So, a couple of topics, uh, some boring slides about a company, a firm, and then give you a little bit of uh, maybe a summary uh, about VC, venture capitalists, or VC funding, and then give you some insight about the global market, why we're excited about this, and uh, hopefully some ideas what we think that will make you guys successful. So we are uh, essentially a well distributed team. We have offices in, the, we're based in Dublin. We have offices in San Francisco, uh, Tokyo, and Singapore. And I personally have lived in all, most of these uh, cities or countries. And I've been in the industry for 16 years, uh, about 10 years mainly in the venture, covering many different aspects of um, investment, and from early stage to late stage to M&A. And the thing is, um, it's actually quite uh, applicable from an investing perspective that we don't really need to be the expert in a specific vertical, but we can apply our disciplines and then be able to empower uh, the companies that we invest in or work with to be successful. Um, for us, we are not a game fund, but we are fairly active in the gaming space. So essentially, we invest in the mobile ecosystem from back-end analytics to maybe the social, or digital media, and advertising. We're slowly looking at the um, hardware side, VR and AR, but it's not something we have been doing at the moment. So I guess our key takeaway is like for Indy is not about a, a long, like a lonely venture. It's really about building an ecosystem, a network for yourself. And for us, we really try to draw the expertise from our partners and also try to add value by working with some of the mentors that who can also coach some of our investees and portfolio companies. And uh, part of the reason that we are a bit more bullish or comfortable in the gaming space is because we uh, have an iconic figure. Uh, his name is um, uh, Ina Fulesang. He's uh, our board of advisor. He is the founding member of Capcom and also designer of Street Fighter and many others. And you might heard of his new title called... Um, Mighty number no. nine got um, funding from Kickstarter for four million dollars. So our philo philosophy has always been tackling the global space, meaning it could be anywhere, and we can bring you to different countries based on our network and also experience. Um, but we do, I would say, much more active in Europe and also in US and then we have our ex expertise in the Asian countries and also Japan. So very quick, um, I guess summary about VC funding. I think part of the thing we, we find is there's a lot of mis not misunderstanding, but maybe like different perspective about how you approach uh, VC. F what I like to say is VC funding is not about project financing. Most of the time, they're interested in the team and the company, but not just your one IP or one project. Uh, so that's not for us, essentially, no matter how good it is, we like to really invest uh, the whole entity. And then uh, don't come to us and saying you're having trouble with your finance status and you want to ask some value out or pay your debt or whatever it is, and uh, pay your bill or salary. Um, we really want the studios, developers, to invest themselves in the venture and try to draw as little salary as possible and then invest in the development side of things. Um, and it's not us to help you to generate stable revenue. So really, we are looking for something um, very large in a sense in terms of scope. Uh, really high growth potential, 
uh, you are looking for someone who can really bring strategic value to your business. And I will have to say, you will start your process first, and then we will help you, or other VC will help you to cross the chasm. You know, regardless if it's um, growing to the next stage or just kind of get off the ground initially. And um, you can't really get rich by raising money from VC, uh, to be honest. No matter, like, you know, either you're Uber or not, they raise a lot of money. There's huge responsibilities behind. A lot of fun, actually, they, they're back, like the, what we call the LP, the investor of the fund, is uh, the pension fund, you know, the government money. So you can imagine you burn someone's pension's money, it's not something you really want to do, right? So you want to do something perfectly f when you raise money. And what we are looking for um, is, uh, is actually something of balance, right? Uh, not too much of a lifestyle business. You, if you are telling me you have a very stable um, kind of uh, cash flow, I mean, of course, we are all looking for like really good business cash flow positive. But if you're telling me just like a very stable business, I think it's not really what we're looking for. We think, you know, most of the... Uh, studio traditionally is a bit more like a lifestyle business. You can really have a like nice life, you know, working maybe as a work for hire studio or project. But uh, for us, it's not that interesting. And on the other spectrum, we are looking for something very creative, very innovative, um, but not too much. Sometimes it's like kind of a little bit too far the spectrum. Then it will get a little bit, uh, think they will be a bit ahead of time that might not be ready for us. Um, so something to really remember is uh, you really have to have a big vision and uh, have a very strong execution. So you can think big, but if you can't execute, that's no meaning. So just an example, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but on the left hand side is a very nice, you know, lifestyle business, you know, in the restaurant or food business. And the, Right hand side, my right hand side. You know, I met this guy in San Francisco. He's a street performer. Um, I don't know if you can see on the picture. He's actually a one-man band. He carries like guitar, drum, everything. He can perform a song perfectly by himself. Um, but I think it's a bit too creative, <laughs> in a sense. I think he should find a you know a, a band you know member to join him rather than just do it all alone. So that's my takeaway. So. Our perspective is that why is it like so hard for investors to join this, you know, massive market and venture is because I think it's from a statistic point of view. Uh, that's always what we look for is numbers. Is traditionally there they show the path of a nice kind of stable business, like 95%, um, if they still survive, they manage to kind of get by or uh, sustain based on various projects, right? And then maybe sort of 1% of them, you know, becomes a unicorn or superstar, like the king or the supercell. And, but in the tech world, there is uh, really a potentially a very good sustainable model and a business that they can, they need to experiment, but then, you know, if they manage to crack the code, then at least like, you know, about a little bit less than 50% can get to the, past the tipping point and then get through the, maybe the growth stage. And if they survive, they will be able to sort of join 10% of the startup companies to either um, be a unicorn, which is like less than 1%, or at least have a very sustainable, wealthy, high value business, which you don't always see in the headline. So I'm not saying, you know, there's no um, pot like potential for the gaming companies. It's just like the mindset you have to have in order to uh, really go past like thinking about project at a time, really think about long-term uh, vision and then what you really want to achieve um, for your venture. So what really, the reason why we're very excited about this uh, market is that uh, it's definitely something very big and it's keep growing. And right now in the whole gaming 
universe, I mean the mobile ecosystem, 75% uh, revenue is coming from gaming, so that's very exciting. And um, I'd like to highlight, you know, I, I said that um, this is a really global business. Uh, Asia is really growing um, with like, just the mobile itself is about 230 billion dollars uh, market in about 2017. And it's a upside down pyramid. Uh, obviously we're basically looking at Asia as one big region, um, but individually, um, still individual countries have to have a specific, different strategies. But what I'm saying is, uh, the market is growing and it's growing much faster in Asia. And from our investor perspective, we always look at uh, different regions and also the potential financial transactions. Uh, in Asia, there has been a lot more exits in the past. Um, at least those who exceed the US dollars, uh, 100 million. Um, and it's a stable growth, not just like a spike. So that's exciting. It's also exciting for uh, Western developers because a lot of Eastern develop, uh, companies are looking for Western content, uh, talents from the Western market. So again, there's a massive, massive uh, demand and growing supply, I would say. So at the end of the day, uh, you are facing a very late term uh, problem to grow from a small companies to bigger. A lot of com people uh, compare gaming to movies and such. I would think that is actually closer to music industry for various reasons. Although um, the gaming industry is a little bit more tech driven, music is a more content driven. Um, so in order for small companies to grow bigger or be able to uh, go or co be competitive with like mid size or bigger companies is that they really need to find the right partner um, that includes like right investor. So from the uh, different type of investment perspective, uh, the my left hand side, the smart money, there's also the passive and some people call it the dumb money. I don't think that's the right term, but I think some investors are just like more uh, passive. So, but in terms of the smart money, um, I think you sh when you are early, you should really look for um, investors who understand the industry, who understand your team and has a similar passion, has the heart to help you to build, get you through the journey. It's a long journey. And, um, and then also those who understand the market normally look f are looking for amazing team, very, very good product and vision. And then because they take a lot of risk to invest early. And again, you, you, you can't really just give a good uh, pitch, but really show your past, I guess, experience and track record to execute and then really show your methodology, how you think you can actually get through the whole process to develop games. We come across so many developers. They may be able to start um, the project initially and um, and then they have a prototype and whatnot, but to make it to a commercial product is a completely different ball game. So I really want um, uh, developers to think through the whole process and then the time of the time, resources, and uh, your commitment. And so you partner with like the right investors, partners who has the operational experience, who you are willing to listen to, and uh, domain expertise. And then again, later stage, you can like look for someone who are deeper pocket and give you, so we call them passive then because they're not hands-on, they don't really want to deal with you kind of on a daily basis. Um, so this just summarizes like, you know, sort of some of the bottleneck for uh, early stage developers. They um, have a lot of experience potentially and a lot of talents in the technical side, but maybe lacking some of the business side. So I think it's also a good thing that you really open up your mind, really kind of, 
um, you, you might not you don't need to be the business experts, but you need to have some knowledge and uh, might not have the global experience and all of that. So even though you might get the funding at the beginning, but then you really have to have all this like kind of um, knowledge in order to get you through. And um, I'm not going to go for the the funding side. I think you guys all know the funding works uh, re sources already by uh, the previous speakers. So again, uh, we have. Um, Trying to uh, at least, like I said, I've done a lot of investment in other spaces like, you know, digital media, e-commerce. I participate in Pinterest when they were like a billion uh, valuation. Now they're 11. So we're not worried about like making big bet, but I think it's all about how we can actually have a process and not a farm bullet per se, but something solid that we can have a win-win scenario. So we like, we, right now, we are actually putting together some, some of the resources to help empower uh, small developers, so get them more focused on uh, building their own IPs, and um, and then we can also leverage, you know, economy of scale, and then lower their burn rate, lower the amount of money they're trying to raise, so that make it more reasonable, a little bit easier for new investors. So that's it. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, if you have any questions, I don't know if I have time, but I'll be around uh, the rest of the event so you can always approach me after. Thank you.